Night one teenager. New this morning, the Supreme Court has agreed to review appeals challenging state bans on gender-affirming care. Hours earlier in Cicero, it was a chaotic afternoon. We just learned two bystanders were shot and killed by what police are calling outside agitators. It happened near 50th and Cermak Road. Five hours later, detectives still on the scene and the victims yet to be identified. This was one of several incidents in Cicero today. Also in Cicero tonight, new video you'll only see on two men being hauled out by police after they were found hiding in the back of a looted liquor store. Surveillance video shows at least a dozen looters ransacking that store. CBS 2's Charlie DeMar spoke with the owner tonight, Charlie. Jim and Erica, it has been a very busy day here in Cicero. There have been lootings, there have been shootings, uh, killings, as you mentioned, uh, off the top there. But I did have the opportunity to talk to one of those uh, store owners of one of those looted out businesses. We were in there, we were talking to the owner, getting some video of the cleanup, but then things changed as we quickly realized that not all of the looters were out of that store. You will quickly lose count of how many looters bust into El Patron liquor store in Cicero, jumping the counter, trashing display cases, and breaking bottles in just a few minutes before Cicero police arrive. Chopper 2 shows officers using their batons to make arrests, confrontations as the looters try to run away. A police dog was even let loose. The damage was done, but Chet Patel, a friend of the liquor store owner, brought to tears while hugging the officers who quickly cleared the business, saving what's left. Before I cried, the officer cried. And that what made me cry. And I said, this is not what is supposed to happen in our country. As the store cleared out, you know, it's all about safety. I don't care, really. this, this can be replaced. Life cannot. Owner Sandeep Patel and a group of neighbors cleaned up. Some of the looters were trapped inside.
Employee Emmanuel Salgado spotted the two struggling looters on a back storage rack. Hold on, we're getting the gun out. Police found a gun in a backpack along with a pipe. Both been arrested and taken into a transport van. Unfortunately, one guy had a gun. I mean, we never know. You gotta react. It's a couple of seconds you gotta react. So as you saw, some intense moments inside that liquor store today. Not only uh, you know that were they dealing with the cleanup of that looting, but uh, seeing those two guys jump out. Uh, definitely uh, very intense inside, but Cicero police, they responded very quickly. As you can hear, there's a lot of activity here still in Cicero. Police are telling people to simply stay home, let them handle this, and as Erica mentioned, uh, police are calling these outside agitators who are causing the issues in Cicero tonight. We are live in Cicero. Charlie DeMar, CBS 2 News. All right, Charlie, thank you. This city used to rock me and hold me and sing me to sleep. 
We've been hearing about me and Uncle Chester as long as I can remember. One minute she was married to him, then the next minute she was gone with his head. thing in the world to ride in a hearse as long as you were riding up front. But for the first time in my life, I felt like a boy with a capital up. I can't I belong to nobody. You just cut them? Yeah, I'm not using it today. The time I have to go, the time I have to go. Hey, I think I'm going to go to the party. I'm going to go to Thailand. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I'm going to go to the party. 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 I'm
a la panel, porque le dije que quería ir a la panel, ¿no? porque esas rosas son muy gruesas para, está muy caliente pues. Qué bueno. Y dijo, oh, aguanta ahí igual le voy. Le dije, pues que no te lista, ahorita bueno. me voy a ir a bañar. Y dijo, ok. That sounds like a plan. Pero yo quiero ir a Timer. Dice que vale como mil por acá. Not bad. Like this make. Now I was thinking about that. How's that working out for you, Doug? It's just sort of a... Dile a Mike que prueba su... Huh? Taste. Okay, I already ate. No, no más para taste. Ya yeah, comí. And then look, you can put it down flat. Like that. Oh, esta buena para la espalda. En vez de sentarte ahí, te sientas ahí para tu espalda. Exercising. Okay. Mm -hmm. I leave it up here. All right, good looking out. No working, no turkey. Para que no puedo usar para planchar. Oh, Mikey, ¿me oyes? Que lo vas a para planchar. No. Se va a quemar. Yeah. Que no es para planchar porque se quema. Que me voy a ir con mi A ver si me da 100 pesos para comprar un estilo. Porque nunca me compré sus rosas. Y yo no quiero que ella sea. Fine, upstanding, courageous, God-fearing gentleman. Fine, good, honest, hard-working. Credit to Dodge City and the whole country around. What are you talking about Packy Roundtree? What he said. Packy wasn't nothing but a shipless mountain state. que me quiere dejar una mosca en pran.
no espero al destino, construyo mi propio camino, como mi arte, mi troca es una extensión de mi ser. Behind the scenes, behind the lines, things behind the scenes. Get him back here. Let's get this done. With a suspect name, Angela Fields actually has more answers than most who are reeling from Cicero homicides. We just want to be heard. CBS2 analyzed all Cicero murders since 1995 and found only about 41% are clear. He was trying to change for his daughter. Jorge Anaclito's case is marked investigation. No one held responsible for 14 years and counting. I feel like it's about time we need we need some kind of answers to um, why is it taking so long. We asked Cicero Police Superintendent Jerry Shalata about it. He took over in 2005 and doubled the size of the gang unit. Shalata says that led to a drop in gang-related murders, which are notoriously harder to solve because of retaliation fears. Did that crime reduction affect Cicero's clearance rate? Possibly. Data shows arrests in 70% of murders that happened in the past five years. Again, as compared to 41% over 25 years. Fields and Anacleto both noticed a difference in the handling of their older cases recently. They've been answering my emails and my calls, so I'm hoping they gave me a little bit of hope this time around because it's, um, I think it's new detectives. Shalata says he specifically assigned three Cicero officers to cold cases. They have their hands full. My mother was never the same. More than 60 families are waiting for closure. More victory, CBS 2 News. See Lauren's original story in our CBS Chicago app. Look for the section called Morning Insiders. What will the world of Formula One feel like without her? It's essential to have trust in your team. Confidence in your car and above all, reliance on accurate data. Trust is what keeps me pushing forward. Judy and Rob, the big question really is, did an alleged gunman go on random shooting sprees a month apart? In state police's case, they say that random appears to be the case more than anything else. We do know tonight that a Cicero man and a teenager are now in custody. Today, investigators linked this 20-year-old Cicero man, Joseph Guzman, to two homicide scenes a month apart. A total of three people were killed. I think this would go towards possibly the offender's lack of uh, care or respect for human life more than anything else. The first homicide scene was on September 28, 2021, an expressway shooting on the Stevenson around 11.38 at night. Authorities say Guzman shot and killed a driver and a passenger in a vehicle. They were returning home. Uh, one was actually uh, just had just finished a shift working, and his friend was just uh, accompanying him for the car, for the car ride. Although state police will not release the victims' names, the medical examiner identified the victims as Eric Macedo and Felix Garan, both 21. Why they were shot remains unclear. I can't speak to the motive as it's an ongoing investigation. After that, investigators linked Joseph Guzman to a second homicide scene. This one happened October 24, 2021, in the early morning hours on the 2800 block of 50th Court. Our victim... Mr. Joshua Gonzalez, uh, yeah, he was uh, going home and uh, he was uh, definitely an innocent victim. In the Cicero shooting, police say Guzman and a 17-year-old male are charged with murder. Again, the motive is unclear. I'm not here to speak about motive at this point, unfortunately. What is clear is that cameras that can read license plates on area expressways played a part in the investigations. 
And Cicero police say that Guzman and the 17-year-old, who are both in custody, they are known gang members. That is according to Cicero police. They say that day on October 24th, those two were driving around looking for rival gang members. Tonight, Guzman is being held without bond, and the juvenile, the 17-year-old, is on a $10 million cash bond. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel. Solo hay uno. Somos McGrath Honda de St. Charles, el concesionario Honda número uno de autos usados y certificados, donde le damos la mejor oferta con el mejor servicio al cliente. Escoja de nuestra gran selección, porque los mejores autos nuevos se convierten en los mejores autos usados y certificados. Vengan ya a McGrath Honda de St. Charles en la calle Maine, el concesionario Honda número uno de autos usados y certificados en Chicago. Tonight, fire and heat colliding extreme temperatures, baking millions as wildfires engulf the West. The dangerous record-breaking heat wave put... Aren't you uh, overstepping your authority a little? Or what? Maybe you ought to just let them shoot each other and have none with it. Hey, Chester. I'm the one that needs a doctor. You don't need a doctor, mister. You haven't got long to live. What are you all? Related? You're a peace officer. Don't you like peace? He's been yelling like that for the last half hour. Says he wants to see you. Wants to see me? What for? Well, I don't know. We just, uh, you know, I don't particularly much care. If you run into any big words there, I'll be glad to pronounce them for you. You decide how you want it, Mr. Harder. It's men like him that give jails a bad name. Well, I can't sit around neglecting other patients waiting for you to get shot. I'd make more money that way. I'll bet you if you tried to arrest her, she wouldn't even resist at all. Do you really believe that? No. I sure am getting a belly full of you. You don't have to take it. What are you yammering about now?
The bench press is the goat of upper body exercises. Do this right and you'll see massive gains in your chest as well as your shoulders and arms. But do this wrong, and even if it doesn't happen right away, you risk seriously injuring your shoulders and elbows to the point where you may never be able to bench again. The most important part is with step one, setup. The bench press involves a fixed back position against the bench and a fixed hand position on the bar. This can force your joints into positions they shouldn't be in. Preventing this starts with your grip width. Now the closer you grip, The dumbbell bench press is arguably the most effective choice for building your chest. That said, if you don't do it correctly, rather than working your chest, you'll end up working more of your other muscles like the front of your shoulders and your triceps. There's five mistakes that cause this to happen. They're easy to fix, but will make a massive difference in your chest growth. Let's start with mistake number one. The first mistake has to do with your arm path. Typically, people use a very wide arm path and press the dumbbells straight up and down. This is so common because pressing with this form actually makes the movement feel easier and will enable you to use heavier weights. But not only have this form. Introducing the all new, all electric Honda Prologue. Made to inspire the newest generation of dreamers. The all new, all electric Prologue from Honda. It's shown to have a greater risk for shoulder injury but it also just doesn't stimulate the chest very well. To maximize chest activation, you want your arm path to line up in the same direction that the chest fibers run. A wide arm path with the elbow spread out doesn't accomplish this very well, and instead lines up better with the front delts and a small muscle underneath the chest called the coracobrachialis. This is why many of you likely feel this movement more in the front of your shoulders rather than your chest. So to align the arm path with the majority of the chest fibers, you'll instead want to tuck your elbows to about a 45 to 60 degree angle away from your body and allow your grip to turn in slightly with your elbows. Just keep in mind that when you apply this form, the dumbbells will no longer move straight up and down, but rather forwards on the way down towards your mid chest and then backwards on the way up towards your shoulder. So once you fix your arm path, it's important that you don't then make the next mistake, which has to do with your forearms. I remember back in my first few years of lifting, I got very strong with this exercise very quickly. I take the 95 pound dumbbells and throw them around like they were nothing. But I noticed that although my arms definitely got bigger, my chest just never really grew. Eventually, I realized what I was doing wrong. As the weights would get heavier, I started bending my forearms inwards more and more without realizing. This is a conversation that is very common, especially among those who struggle with their chest development. This is because by bending the forearms inwards, you're actually shortening the lever, which makes the movement easier by taking some of the load off the chest. It also gets the triceps more involved to take on some of the load as well. And even the most subtle of a bend can drastically decrease the load place on the chest. In fact, if we apply very basic physics to get a rough estimate, if the forearms bend such that the weights end up halfway between your shoulder and elbow, you would end up reducing the load actually placed on the chest by about half. Although this can help you lift heavier weights, you aren't getting any higher stimulus on your chest and are simply causing more strain to your joints. Lighten the weight, keep your forearm vertical over your elbow throughout each rep, and you'll feel the difference right away. Now, even with your forearms fixed, you may be guilty of making this next mistake, which is the most common mistake I see. Given that many of us are already stuck in a hunched over posture, we have the tendency to round our shoulders forward whenever we press. This is especially true for those with lagging chest development because they'll often have stronger shoulders that will want to take over the movement. This can lead to the front of the shoulders experiencing muscle the growth rather than the chest. To avoid this, I'd first suggest that you open up your chest before you even do the dumbbell press so that you're better able to activate it. You can do this by extending your back over a foam roller and then performing over and backs and band pull-aparts with a band. And I'll leave a link down below in the description box to the one I'm using here. Then, when you actually go into the movement, on the way down, I want you to think about it as if you were using your back muscles to pull the weight down towards your chest 
by pinching your shoulder blades together. And then on the way up, just avoid letting your shoulders round forward and take over the movement, and instead keep your chest up and think about squeezing your biceps into the sides of your chest. Focus on this every single rep and you'll immediately notice your chest rather than your shoulders now doing most of the work. All right, so we fix the shoulders rounded forward at the top, but it's important to avoid this next mistake at the top position as well. The main function of the chest is horizontal reduction, which is simply the act of bringing the arms together. This is what makes the dumbbell press such an effective chest builder, since the arms are pulled together under load. Knowing this, you might think that bringing your arms in as close as possible at the top would better engage the chest. In fact, some people even touch the dumbbells together at the top. However, since we're using dumbbells, the line of force is straight down because of gravity. This means that once your arms are straight over your shoulders, there's actually no more tension placed on the chest because there's no longer any force pulling your arms apart. Going further than this doesn't stimulate the chest any further and is wasting energy that could otherwise be used towards your next reps. So instead, to keep constant tension on the chest, stop each rep once your arms end up straight over your shoulders. So the last mistake doesn't actually relate to form and instead has to do with the angle of the bench. But Going further than this doesn't stimulate the chest any further and is wasting energy that could otherwise be used towards your next rep. However, since we're using dumbbells, the line of force is straight down because of gravity. This means that once your arms are straight over your shoulders, there's actually no more tension placed on the chest because there's no longer any force pulling your arms apart. Going further than this doesn't stimulate the chest any further and is wasting energy that could otherwise be used towards your next reps. So instead, to keep constant tension on the chest, stop each rep once your arms end up straight over your shoulders. So the last mistake doesn't actually relate to form, and instead has to do with the angle of the bench. The flat dumbbell press is great, but most of the growth you get from this exercise will be in the middle portion of your chest, which can lead to the upper and lower portions of the chest becoming underdeveloped. In fact, in a recent 2020 paper, subjects that performed the incline bench press experienced over double the growth in the upper portion of the chest when compared to subjects that only performed the flat bench press. So in addition to doing just the flat dumbbell bench press, I'd also recommend doing an incline dumbbell press once a week as well. However, when you do this exercise, research has shown that just a very slight incline of about 15 to 30 degrees is optimal to target the upper chest. This is usually just one to two notches up from the bottom position of a bench. For most individuals, anything higher than that often causes the front delts to take over instead. In fact, for some of you, even just a slight elevation by placing a weight plate under the end of a bench may be all you need to really target the upper chest. Now as for the lower portion of your chest, for most people, the flat dumbbell press will already hit this region quite well. Some studies, however, suggest that a slight decline can actually help activate this region even more effectively. So in this case, you can place a weight under the other end of the bench to create just a slight decline. Try that out, see how it feels, and feel free to add it to your weekly routine, such that you're doing a pressing movement that biases the upper chest, a pressing movement that biases the mid chest, and a pressing movement that biases the lower chest. Just remember that all the previous mistakes we went through apply to these dumbbell press variations as well. Now, after you apply these various fixes, you'll notice that you won't be able to lift nearly as much as you used to. It might hurt the ego, but realize that this is a good thing. It means that your chest is now doing most of the work rather than your other muscle groups, and you'll very quickly feel and see the difference this makes to your chest development. Just make sure that you don't fall back into your old habits as you try to increase the weight over time. And guys, it's important that you take the same detailed science-based approach to every single exercise that you do. That way you can get results faster and without harming your joints. For a step-by-step -step plan that puts this all together for you, just head on over to buildwithscience.com and take our analysis The dream was to build a sustainable chocolate company. And with Chase for Business, it's become... Position here. See that once again play out as I do the exercise. So, so far, we're two for two. We've got two of the bigger exercises. We're able to load them up. 
And now we gotta hit the lower portion of the chest. And the lower chest, we've probably heard, is best hit with a dip. Why is that? Again, it's not by accident, it's by anatomy. <coughs> you take your arm through this position of an extended arm behind your body, and it comes and it travels down. And as it travels down, you go from this high to low position, better allowing you to hit the lower fibers of the chest versus the ones that run parallel and versus the ones that run from low to high. So this is really what, what's important here is that you understand that the exercise selection is not random. It's done for a reason to try to take the muscle through this entire range of motion. But there's a very key differentiator of what I just said there. You want to not just take those exercises through their full range of motion. You want to take the muscle through its full range of motion and that is where we need to differentiate and that is where we need to jump off from. Because all of these exercises, see if you can tell the limitation on all of them. From the flat bench press, to the incline bench press, to the dip. They're not crossing midline. And we know that the action of the pec at the shoulder has capability to take this arm, not just through adduction, but across and horizontal adduction across midline. And all those exercises are limited by the fact that they don't take you even to midline, let alone across it. So how would you construct a better chest workout? What you want to do is you want to take those exercises and follow them immediately with a drop set of an exercise that's going to do that. So let's go back to the flat bench press. We go immediately from our flat bench press here to a horizontal cable crossover. Right, now that, again, people might even say too, there's a lot of fans in the cable crossover saying that it's a better chest activator from EMG studies than what a flat bench press is doing. But guys, if you rely on EMG studies and you wind up saying things like that and don't understand that, though it may have a better percentage of activation, it's still not capable of being loaded to the extent that a barbell bench press is, therefore limiting its ability to be effective it's if, if it's the only thing you do. But if you do it in addition to the bench press, you're getting the benefits of, of, of everything. So now we take that, we drop right into this horizontal cable crossover, and we can see that we're actually now taking our arm all the way through and crossing midline and getting that complete. Odias que el aromatizador del carro te paralice con su fuerte olor? Los clips de Febris Car funcionan diferente. Febris te da una frescura constante que empieza y se mantiene en el punto ideal por 40 días. Cámbiate a Febris Car. Puede soportar más de 4.000 veces su peso. Y esa es solo la bisagra de la puerta. Diseño sólido hasta el más pequeño detalle, el TAPS. Obtiene un financiamiento de 0% APR o un bono para clientes de 1.500 dólares en un nuevo TAPS 2024. Exercise, but more so that my physical therapy background tells me that there's reason to dislike it. When you perform it on a bench in this unsupported way with no safety net, you increase the risk of damage to the anterior shoulder capsule. That is something that you don't want to damage ever because it's very hard to repair and restore normal mechanics after that happens. Not to mention the increased risk of pet care that happens because of the extreme positioning of your arms. During this exercise, again, all of this is gated most of all by the fact that there are better alternatives to this that I will cover for you later on down this list. The fact is, for all these reasons, guys, I have to put the big red X, first and foremost, to the bench block. All right, so next up in the category of worst is one that might actually come as a surprise to you because you know how often I like to train on my feet, if at all possible, but it's the standing cable press. And the issue with the standing cable press is it provides more of a challenge to your core than the muscles you're actually trying to build. And just getting into this position here with any type of heavy weight is going to make my abs work much harder to make sure that I don't fall backwards when I'm doing movement. And even if I do this at a split stance where I'm leaning my weight forward, it's still not optimal if I'm going to press the weight that's necessary to cause that overload and growth that we're looking for. For all these reasons, guys, the standing cable press is just not the best press to do when you're looking for things in your chest. So a couple of big red axes on the board behind me, we're still not out of the worst category yet. Here we have to throw in the incline bench press. Now wait, before you riot, understand that just like size matters, angle matters too, a lot. And when it comes to the incline bench press, what angle are you setting it at because it really matters in terms of the gains that you see from the exercise, especially up here in the upper chest. We know that the front delt and the upper chest fibers share not only a close proximity to each other anatomically, but they share some function too. Well, we 
But a negative degree again is completely upright. You're going to shift the majority of that function to the front delt as we would in an overhead press. And if we got completely horizontal, most of the work can be done by the chest. Well, that being said, we have to find that happy medium. And once you cross over 50 or 55 or 60 degrees, you're actually starting to go into that realm of less work for the chest and more for the front delt, which is not why you're doing the exercise in the first place. If you want to maximize your gains on the incline bench press, we're going to choose a lower angle. We'll cover that one later. But for now, the 60 degree incline bench press has to get to be right at. version of it, or a safer version of it, and for that we have to look at the floor slide. I'm a much bigger fan of this exercise because it gives us a chance to have resistant adduction, but we get a chance to do it in a safer setting with the floor acting as the safety net, protecting that anterior shoulder because we don't have those extreme ranges of motion at the bottom. Now some would argue you don't get the same amount of stretch, but I don't even know if that's the real benefit of the flies anyway. Beyond that, we do get to increase the weight that we use on a floor fly versus the weight that we can handle to ensure that safety on a bench fly. And for that, we can create more overload with this in an eccentric manner, which is going to give us an opportunity for more growth. For all these reasons, the better version of the fly is definitely the floor fly. And wrapping up our better category here is an often overlooked exercise that I believe deserves a second look. And it's the underhand dumbbell bench press. And the best thing about this exercise is it provides those that don't have access to an incline bench to still work with their upper chest, especially better than that 60 degree incline dumbbell bench press. EMG studies have actually shown superior activation of those chest fibers doing the underhand version rather than too high of an incline press. That being said, it doesn't come without its limitations. Namely the fact that you're not going to be able to load this exercise as much, and that's mostly due to the fact that there's a lack of stability at the bottom for some. You have to have enough shoulder external rotation to be able to get your body in the right position with your elbows cupped at your side and your hands, elbows, and wrists in line to support the dumbbells to be able to drive them up in that low to high dumbbell path to get that good upper chest activation. And if you don't have that or you're simply looking to load the exercise as heavy as possible, then this one might not be the one for you, but it still deserves its better recognition. And that's why we're going to put it right here at the end of the better category. And now we continue our way up the chart from the worst to the best chest exercises, and we land here squarely in the even better still category. Meaning better than what we just did, but not quite in the almost best yet. But I have to start here with that variation of the push-up that I promised you before. This is called the twisting push-up. And the main thing we're getting here is this additional relative adduction, that small but incredibly important addition to the basic push-up that will take whatever repetition count you can do of the basic push-up and bring it dramatically downward. But at the same time, increase the effectiveness of it, and that's really all that matters. No matter what count you can do of your regular push-up right now, I promise you less push-ups here, but more from it. For that reason, we give the twisting push-up the first in the better still category. And speaking of adduction, our next exercise in our even better still category is one that focuses on that adduction function of the chest better than the things we showed you already, including using the floor fly. This is table crossover. See, the thing about the cable crossover is it not only gives us a chance to get more adduction because we're going to get our hands slightly across midline, but it also gives us a chance to have peak tension where we tend to lose it in either version of the dumbbell fly, floor or bench. But the limitation here comes in the same thing that we dealt with with the standing cable press. I believe the cable crossover is an exercise that we can load up much heavier than we traditionally do. But as we do, we can see we have the same stability demands and the demands placed on the core to keep us in this upright position that might limit the amount of weight that we can use. If we limit the amount of weight, we limit the amount of overload. And by limiting the amount of overload, we limit the amount of growth. For that reason, guys, the cable crossover is my induction exercise of choice, at least for now, when we're talking about the better still exercises. More on that to come. Next up in the better still category is another variation of a bench press. It's actually one of my favorite when your goal is mostly hypertrophy and a little bit less of a focus on strength. It's the lying cable bench press. And what this does is it provides you with a better strength curve with more resistance throughout the entire strength curve of the bench press because of the use of the cable. If I set the cable out wide, the line of resistance is the cable itself. So you can see that it maintains its perpendicularity throughout a greater range of motion than, let's say, on a typical bench press. So at the top of the exercise, when I reach my peak contraction of my chest, I actually still have a lot of tension here that I wouldn't have with a typical barbell or dumbbell. That being said, the difficulty still lies in the fact that I have to get this into position to do a heavy weight. But again, when it comes to placing tension on the chest, this is one of the best. I'm going to place it here 
in this category for that reason. And concluding our better still category is one of those chest exercises that people sometimes don't even realize works the chest, and it's the dumbbell upper chest pullover. And I'm careful to add the designation of upper chest to make sure people understand that there's a way to perform this to favor the upper chest rather than the lats. We know the typical dumbbell pullover works the lats because we're driving it with our elbows in this flared position. However, if you do the opposite of that and you bring your elbows as tight together as possible, you can quickly shift the focus to the upper chest because it's got all the components of a great upper chest contraction. Our arms are elevated up over our head, remembering that we go from this low to high position to get those upper chest fibers activated, and we have the squeeze and the adduction of the elbows as close together that really lights us up. Throw a dumbbell in our hand, we get the overload we're looking for, and that's the reason why I don't want you to overlook this exercise any longer. And so with some top contenders left on the board, we move into our almost best category, and I get to break out my green marker, and we start right here with the dip. And for me, the dip is the best version of a push-up. If you think about it, the dip is essentially a suspended push-up, especially if you angle your body more forward to favor the chest rather than staying upright and favoring your tricep. That being said, the opportunity here to load this exercise is going to be much easier than we have in a push-up. I can strap a weight around my waist and do a weighted dip and continue to provide the progressive overload we need to drive both the strength and the size gains that this exercise provides. Not to mention, I can do a couple other unique things like adding a small twist, which will be similar to the twisting push-up to get just that little bit of extra adduction, which will bring that rep count down, which will bring the effectiveness of the exercise up. For all these reasons, the dip is going to get my first and the almost best category, and it belongs there. All right, so if you haven't caught up by now, you know that I like adduction, and we want to try to get into the chest exercises we perform if we want to see the best gains from it. And that's why I got to go back to it once again with my best option here. This is the heavy one-arm crossover. And how is this different from the crossover? Well, in a very important way. Number one, much more stability. Instead of having to move both arms at one time, which let's say you have 80 pounds in each hand, you're not going to be able to stabilize the whole 160 as well as you can the 80 one arm at a time, which is going to eliminate those balance limitations and allow your core to take a back seat to the muscle you're actually trying to build. And what I like to do here, as I mentioned, is go heavy, so you have the opportunity to do that. Stop doing this exercise as a 30 rep burnout at the end of your chest workout. Instead, prioritize it as one of those great ways to get adduction, not just adduction, but full adduction across midline, better than in any other exercise you've performed so far. This is gonna be my adduction exercise of choice for those reasons, and it's gonna belong firmly up here at the top in my almost best category. In concluding now our almost best category and giving those that are still hyperventilating after looking at the thumbnail a reason to breathe easy, we have the incline bench press up here at the top. The reason though is we're putting it at that 30 to 45 degree angle, not the steeper angle that we talked about before. Because as I said, the angle matters. It's been found that the perfect angle to engage the upper chest without over activating the front delts is going to be this 30 to 45 degree angle. Now whether or not your bench goes to this specific degree doesn't really matter. Just try to go on the shallower side versus steeper when it's the upper chest fiber that you're looking to really engage is the chest that you're trying to grow rather than your shoulders. This is my choice right here firmly at the top. And so then list ranking the best chest exercises from worst to first. There can only be one first. There can only be one best. It's the one that's been staring at you the whole time right here, dead smack in the middle, the barbell or the dumbbell bench press. Now I'm giving you the option. Why? because I just want to make sure that you're doing one of them. And the reason why we put this at the top of this list is because it gives us the best opportunity to do the one thing that we know can continue to drive both strength and hypertrophy, and that is overload this movement. The barbell or the dumbbell bench is something we can easily continue to up the weight on, which is going to continue to progressively keep those gains coming. Now look, the choice between the two exercises is going to be up to you. Some may find the dumbbells are going to give you, A, a little bit more adduction at the top because you can move your hands closer towards each other, and others are going to find that it's a little bit easier on the shoulders to do the dumbbells versus the barbell. Others who are looking to just prioritize strength are likely going to choose the barbell variation because it gives you that extra 20% bump in your total. The fact is, this gets the top spot when looking at the best chest exercises for strength, size, and growth of your chest. Or wait, maybe not. And so since the goal of this video is to give you the best possible information I could, you're going to have to allow me to bend the rules just a little bit. You see, because the best chest exercise is actually not a chest exercise at all. It's a combination of exercises from the bench press 
down into that heavy one on crossover. Realizing that you're going to get that all important adduction, the only missing element from the barbell or dumbbell bench press can create the perfect complement and take the best exercise and make it the greatest of all time. And so with that, guys, hopefully you now know which of the chest exercises you should be doing and which of the chest exercises maybe you want to ditch. The key is understanding why we pick what we pick because the science of the selection matters. As always, we put the science into all we do here. All of our programs available over at athlemax.com. If you found a bit of help, we'll make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. Tell me what other things you want me to cover in the rank series, and I'll do that for you in the future videos. And speaking of future videos, if you haven't already done so, make sure you put some... You get to eight. When you use dumbbells, Presentamos la totalmente nueva y totalmente eléctrica Honda Prologue. Creada para inspirar a la nueva generación de soñadores. La totalmente nueva y totalmente eléctrica Honda Prologue. If your business needs a new application, then developers will have to write code. And so with no need to have to concentrate on this decision at all, just like that, the concentration curl gets the big red X. It's one of the worst bicep exercises. Better than the other. We're going to focus on hypertrophy away from the biceps. Or they'll take that elbow and drive it into their thigh, which just creates a strong leverage for the biceps, once again taking away some of the effectiveness of the exercise because the bicep isn't doing all that it can. Throw in the fact that while you may feel a good contraction of the biceps while doing it, you're certainly not tapping into the biceps full capabilities, as you'll see here shortly. It just isn't one of my favorite choices. And for that reason, guys, the concentration curls gets the first and the bottom of the worst. By the way, if you love concentration curls and you still want to do them, at least do them right. Do me a favor and watch this video over here when this one's done, and I'll show you exactly how to make sure you do every time. Moving on, we have an exercise that proves that just because you throw the word curl after the first part of the name, it doesn't make it a bicep exercise. And that's because the reverse curl is not a good bicep exercise. What we've got here is a good brachialis exercise or brachioradialis exercise, but still not a bicep exercise because one of the main drivers of function for the biceps, and one of the unique abilities it has, is to supinate that forearm. If you fully pronate in order to grab this bar with an overhand grip, you are minimizing the contribution of the biceps to the exercise. Sure, it will be there to help to flex that elbow and bring the bar up, but as the third line of defense, not when we're trying to create hypertrophy, guys, and for that reason, the reverse curl, just because it has that important second part of the name, is not one of the important exercises as we work our way up to the best. And so if you confused the right way to do the concentration curl and got confused with what muscles the reverse curl does, this exercise is just plain confused. We're talking about the bicep push-up. It's just not a bicep exercise. It never is. It never will be. And for those that think, yeah, but for calisthenics, no. But not even, no, not at all. Yeah, but it, no. Nope. How about just a little? Unfortunately, no. I mean, even just this one. There's just no way in human creation to convince me that the bicep push-up is a good bicep exercise, let alone a good bicep building exercise. We're talking about a push-up. You know, a push-up. Or chest, triceps, or shoulders. You're not working your biceps. And the eccentric overload argument isn't a strong one either. It just is not a good exercise, guys. It should never bear the name of a bicep push-up for all these reasons. It only bears a big red X right through its name, and that's why it belongs here at the bottom of the list. And so with that, I now get to break out my blue marker as we work our way up into the better category. All good exercises, all good exercises, just different levels of effectiveness based on some of their inherent limitations. 
And if you're looking for a bicep exercise that actually works the biceps, then let's start looking at this one, the inverted chin curl. Because what this does is it checks all the boxes in terms of bicep function. In order to put yourself up, you're going to have to flex the elbow. Check. Have the forearm in a supinated position to have that underhand grip. Check. And have the shoulders in a flexed position out in front of our body, the most overlooked component of a true biceps complete contraction. Check. What holds this exercise back, however, is simply loading it becomes a lot more difficult. When you're looking for progressive overload, this may not be the best choice, but when you're looking for a good body weight bicep exercise, as I mentioned, it's better than the bicep push-up, and this one's the one that you're going to want to use, and it belongs to the first with the blue circle in the better category. And so if we took a giant step up from the worst to better in our body weight category, let's take another step up when we talk about the reverse curl, and this is with the Zotman curl. So at least with the Zotman curl, the first portion, the concentric part of the lift, is going to be performed with the forearms supinated. So we're going to get that much better bicep contribution. However, the problem comes in with what we do next, and that is just simply pronating to perform the eccentric component, or lowering part of the lift. Guys, remember, you are actually strongest in the eccentric part of the lift. And when you're trying to grow a muscle, tapping into your ability to handle more weight or slow down the eccentric on the muscle you're trying to grow is important. The Zotman curl is taking away that opportunity. For that reason, it's half good, but not good enough. And that means it's going to get a circle here for a better exercise, but not great. And so next up in the better category is an improvement on, once again, an exercise in the worst category, those concentration curls. And this time, we're looking at the preacher curl. Again, it's a great exercise for building up bigger biceps, but it has some limitations. Most importantly for me, I'm a little confused by how people load the exercise. I think it comes from a false sense of security of thinking, once again, with those elbows driving back into the pad, they have that additional leverage that oftentimes convinces them they should and could handle more weight than their biceps can handle. If you need some more convincing about that this isn't always the case, I'm going to give you a three-second countdown to look away. Three, two, one. Ah. Yeah, that's ugly. But I did give you a heads up. Now, to worry though, it's not going to happen to you if you take my advice here and do the exercise as it's supposed to be performed with a much more responsible load. Don't fall for that false sense of security that you get from driving your elbows into a pad. And by the way, when you actually start to free those elbows up, better exercise options await you. We're going to encounter those later in the list, but for now, the preacher curl just gets the blue circle for a better exercise. And wrapping up the better category, we have one of those exercises where its limitation is actually its benefit. We're talking about the cable curl. You see, if you've ever performed this one, you know it's one smooth exercise, and it feels really damn good. Placing the biceps in that peak contracted state with peak tension in that portion of the rep. However, its limitation is it doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of resistance in the beginning of the exercise, making it a little bit uneven. But this is where the benefit comes in, because those that have elbow issues or elbow tendonitis, they feel most of their discomfort when they're first starting out the curl. That's where most of the load is being placed on that fully extended elbow. So having an exercise that can relieve some of that tension in the beginning part of the range of motion is a godsend. That's where the cable curl steps up to the plate. Of course, this is all determined by the position of the cable in relation to your forearm. If it's more perpendicular, there's more force being generated into the biceps. If it's more parallel, there isn't. So one quick fix for those that are looking to take this even to the next level, just don't go down as far when you lower the cable down. Start about here, and you'll see you can maintain that perpendicular relationship and keep the tension high. Either way, if you're looking at offset some of the load on your elbow, it feel good, or just want to step it up to another level here, the cable curl is one of those really solid, better exercises. And so now I get to break out my yellow marker as we continue our way up the charts this time to the better still category. Exercises that are slightly better than everything we just covered. And we start right away with another cable exercise that takes it up to another level. This is the flex curl or something we call the lift buster curl. And the main difference here is with that high anchor point comes the shoulder flexion required to grab the handle in the first place to hit that second all important component of bicep function. Of course, as we bend the elbow and curl it in, we're going to feel that good peak contraction at the top. If you bend your wrist back just slightly here to keep the forearms out of the move, which is very easily done with this exercise, you feel even more of a complete contraction. This is a really solid option, particularly when you're looking Looking for a good cable bicep exercise and therefore it gets the first yellow circle in the better stone category. Next up is an exercise that's unique from all the ones we've actually talked about so far and it's what places it right here squarely in the better stone category when we're talking about the drag curl because this exercise is uniquely hitting the long head more effectively than any others that we talked about. Why? Because we're changing the elbow position. 
Everything else we talked about so far had the elbow out in front of the body. But when we get the elbow traveling back behind the body, one very important thing happens. We get more of a stretch on the long head of the biceps. Because the long head is the only one that has a tendon that crosses the shoulder joint. So by getting our shoulder back into extension, we can place more stretch on that long head and get a better activation of it. If you want to start seeing better long head development and therefore better bicep peaks, this is what you're going to want to make sure you include. It's one that we are going to definitely include in our better stroke category. And so if the drag curl is great at hitting the long head, what's our short head option that gives us that better still ranking? For me, it's going to be the spider curl. And what we get here is a better option than the preacher curl for the reasons I mentioned before. A little bit more freedom of movement. However, take note of the position of the arms. Again, this one's now not going to be behind our body, but those elbows are going to be positioned slightly out front. And by simply dangling ourselves over an inclined bench like this, they're going to be in slight flexion. As we curl up, the peak tension on the biceps is going to occur at that peak moment of contraction, making it a very good exercise for helping those that can't feel that mind-muscle connection. Not to mention, because those elbows are not driving back into the pad, creating that leverage effect that I didn't like in the Pritchard Curl, we have the ability to perform the exercise more safely. The Spider Curl is definitely going to belong in this better still category. And finally, since those bicep peaks that you're trying to develop, there's one more left here in the better still category you're definitely going to want to do, and it's the Dumbbell Waiter Curl. And I love this exercise because it places that long head of the biceps in direct line of pull because of its more proximal attachment on the radius. What we've got here is an exercise that's built in effectiveness by simply having to grab the dumbbell in the first place. With the hands cupped under the end of the dumbbell, you're going to get a little bit of wrist extension, taking the forearms out of the exercise, particularly as you lift up to the top. A lot of times, curls can be dominated by the forearms. This exercise won't allow that because you have to keep the top of the dumbbell parallel to the ceiling. At the same time, with the hands slightly rotated in, again, that alters that line of pull to really target that lateral long head more effectively. I've said before, what you see is what you train. If you can see a little bit more of the outside of the bicep, you're more effectively hitting that long head. If you see more of the inside of the bicep, stay tuned, that's coming, then you're hitting more of the short head. This waiter curl checks all those boxes and gives you that peak contraction at the top. There's none better when you're trying to build bicep peaks and long head development, and that's why it's going to get the last spot in this better still category. And so with our exercise options literally behind me now, I get to break out my green marker as we work our way up into the almost best category. And for this, we're going to go back to those long head targeted movements, this time slightly better than the drag curl.